Hey folks, welcome you all to a new session. This is CA Ganesh Bharadwaj. So now we have completed the basic concepts and cost sheet. So these are two chapters that we've completed. So now in this session, we will get started with a brand new chapter called as overheads, right? So before we start uh, the next chapter, so generally I have the habit of uh, sharing a motivational story before the start of every chapter. So let me just take a few minutes time and share something uh, that I feel was really motivational. So that has moved me. So how many of you know this guy called Sylvester Stallone? You guys know this, this guy? No. Okay. So Sylvester Stallone, wait, I'll show. Uh, he's basically a Bollywood actor. So this is the guy. So he is Sylvester Stallone. I think currently, what's his age? It must be about... Uh, He's an old guy now. He's 77 years old. Right now, he's 77 years old. But yeah, he's a Bollywood, uh, sorry, a Hollywood fame. That is, uh, he's acted in uh, so many movies in, uh, you know, Hollywood in the US. So now this guy is well known. He's very popular today. But not many know the struggles that he had faced earlier in his life. So the first movie that he came up with was a movie called as Rocky. Not this Rocky by not our KGF Rocky. This came somewhere in 1970s. So Rocky was the first movie he acted. Now about Sylvester Stallone. So what he did was this, uh, uh, he, he wanted to, he badly wanted to act. So he wanted to pursue his career in acting. So he went to the New York. So he went to New York in the United States. Then he just, uh, he had a story and he wanted to keep, uh, he approached a lot of producers and all that. His story was time and again rejected. In fact, for about three days or a few days together, he stayed in a bus stand, a bus, term, bus terminal. He was stay, staying on the footpath. He slept there because he was completely broke. He didn't have any money. One day he saw this, uh, you know, Mohammed Ali, the boxer. So the Mohammed Ali's fight, he was actually seeing that boxing game you're seeing. Then suddenly one idea stuck, for, uh, stuck him. So the next few days together, he didn't sleep. So he wrote a very good script and that was about a life of a boxer. And he just, you know, he was so amazed with uh, the way Mr. Muhammad Ali was uh, playing the game and all that. So he actually coined up a story. But this time he told himself, the story was so nice. He told himself that no matter what, I will be the actor in my movie. That is, I wrote the movie, fine. I'm not selling the script to anyone unless and until they accept me to act in this movie. Now, one company he approached. They said they will give him some uh, 35,000, sorry, they said they gave, they, they will give him some 3,25,000 dollars and all, that's a big money. This guy had nothing at all. He said, okay, but I should act in the movie. They said, no, you cannot act, you just sell the script and you go off. Now he said, no, nothing, I don't want it. So now what happened? He, despite the fact that he was completely broke, he was badly in need of money. Now this guy was approached by these big companies because the story was excellent. But he made it a point that he should be the actor in that movie because he had such a big dream for acting. Now he couldn't, these guys are rejecting him. Now he had his, his close friend, the only asset that he held was a dog. His close, uh, that was his pet dog. Now at a point where he was completely broke, he couldn't do anything. He sold this dog for $25, $25 rupees $25. I mean, just $25, right? He sold his dog for $25 just to make his uh, end meet and all that, just for his livelihood. And finally, some uh, producing company, they accepted that fine, okay, you can act for the movie, but instead of $325,000 and all, I will not pay so much, only $35,000 I will pay. So you should both sell your script as well as you should be acting in that movie. He said, fine. And that was the beginning of Sylvester Stallone's rise. There was a series of movie called Rocky, really famous. It's like, you know, it's a must watch kind of movie, one of the best movies that have ever been shot in Bollywood. So now that's when he started, that's when he rose to fame. And if you, you've seen his photo, right from his childhood, he was actually paralyzed on one side. So he has a paralytic attack, still he didn't, that didn't stop him from pursuing his dream of acting. Number one, number two he was completely broke, he was in need of money, he had a good script, he could have easily sold it and got money and settled down in life. He said, this is not my purpose. I have a particular target in my mind. Let me go ahead and do it. And he ended up doing that. And guess what? 
the moment he the first uh the rocky one so rocky one two three four five there are a lot of series the moment the first movie released he got a lot of money the producers and all they were uh, you know flaunting around with him they were like you know yes come on you can continue writing this series he will sponsor you and all that the first time he got this money you know what he did he tried to find out the person who bought his dog from him and he paid i think about 1 lakh dollars to get back the dog that he originally sold for 25 dollars because that guy was not willing to sell it back because that guy now has a celebrity's dog no so just to give back the cele celebrity's dog to give it back to celebrity itself he is demanding so much of money he said nothing doing that's my love of life so i will never miss it so basically the reason why i'm sharing you the story is despite the fact that you know he had a lot of uh, you know a lot of obstacles in life he he, he had a very proper target in his mind no matter what i am going to achieve this target and look at the kind of distractions and temptations he had someone was offering him the kind of money that he has never seen in his life and remember i'm talking about 1970s 1970s 3 lakh 25 thousand dollars is like a huge money it must be worth about 10 crores or 20 crores in inr in today's uh, today's money just imagine you are sitting in street you have no money at all someone is giving you 20 crores how you will feel but still he denied that he had the guts to do that and that is where he is standing today so and still at this age he is not given up on life you see his level of fitness you see his level of fitness 77 years old he's actually like a grandfather right but he doesn't look like one because he keeps himself fit even today and that's the story about silver sister and one of the most inspiring uh, um, uh, actors and not just that initially when he didn't get anything at all he didn't uh, get a chance to act in any movies and all that he tried to do any kind of uh, you know petty jobs just to you know keep his survival going on to the extent where he once acted in an adult movie also he once acted in an adult movie because he couldn't do anything that was the kind of person he was and today he is one of the superstars in hollywood the entire world knows him so that is the power of determination that we all can have so remember one thing more than anything else our mind is the biggest strength of motivation for us our mind is such a very strong phenomenon in our body that we generally tend to take it for granted if you you have a strong determination no matter what your uh, life throws at you you will be able to achieve it and as simple as that that's about it there are hundreds and thousands of stories of people who have made it from literally rags to riches the only thing that is common between all of them is their willpower and determination so now i uh, time and again i tell my students ca exams are nothing more than a test of your emotions if you keep your emotions in check you can definitely crack it the problem is we get panicked towards the when your exam approaches we get panicked when you have 6 months or 7 months for the exam you are very lethargic both are extremes no have a level headed approach have a level headed approach yes this is what i want show the power of consistency and you can do it this is not just about ca this is about anything that you do in life if you have your priorities set right thousands of excuses whatever are there one strong reason is good enough to break all those excuses that one strong reason is your determination are you clear with this so this is what i just wanted to share before we get started with the new chapter yes guys so shall, shall we get started with the new chapter yes right so now let's get started so what's the name of the chapter yes overheads huh? it goes over your head no it should go into your head so this is chapter three chapter three yes overheads please take the heading fresh page overheads overheads so they have also mentioned overheads absorption costing method this is the name of the chapter as given in the study material icai study material overheads absorption costing method <clears throat> Now, guys, first write down, please write down. Let me dictate a few points. You first write it down. Write down learning objectives. Learning objectives. So practically, what are all the aspects that we are going to learn in this particular chapter? Now, this learning objectives is not the same as mentioned as learning objectives in our study material. 
So from a very practical viewpoint, I am, I am telling you, I've coined this learning objectives from a very, very practical viewpoint. These are the areas that we are going to cover in this particular chapter so that you get an idea. Write down point number one. Guys, I want you to increase your speed. At the same time, your handwriting should not deteriorate. Okay, write down point number one. Primary distribution of overheads. Overheads throughout this chapter, you can use the short form OHS. Okay, primary distribution of overheads. Quick, come on. Primary distribution of overheads. Right? Number two, leave a line gap and write number two. Secondary distribution of overheads. Quick, guys. Secondary distribution of overheads. Second redistribution of overheads. Under that, write down A. Under that, inside tab, write down A. Direct redistribution method. Write down direct redistribution method. Redistribution method. Direct redistribution method. B. Step method or non reciprocal method step method it's also known as step ladder step or step ladder method and non reciprocal services method alternative words for this then c write down repeated distribution method Write down repeated distribution method. Repeated distribution method. Repeated distribution method. D. Simultaneous equation method. Simultaneous equation method. Simultaneous equation method. E. Trial and error method. E. Trial and error method. E. Trial and error method. Done. Line gap point number three. Line gap point number three. Absorption of overheads. You can use the short form OHS. Absorption of overheads. Absorption of overheads. Under that write down A. Calculation of absorption rate. Calculation of absorption rate and B, charging of overheads to the products. A, calculation of absorption rate. B, charging of overheads to the products. A, calculation of absorption rate. B, charging of overheads to the product. To the products, plural, plural products. Right? Done. Line gap point number four. Six different types of absorption rates. Six different types of absorption rates. Point number five. Predetermined absorption rate. Predetermined. You can look at the spelling. Predetermined absorption rate versus actual absorption rate. Predetermined absorption rate versus actual absorption rate done guys done then line gap point number six concept of under stroke over absorption concept of under stroke over absorption and its treatment in cost accounts concept of under stroke over absorption and its Treatment in cost accounts and its treatment in cost accounts. Done. Line gap point number seven. Blanket rate versus departmental rate. Blanket rate. B L A N K E T. Blanket rate versus departmental rate. Blanket rate versus departmental rate. Line gap point number eight. Machine our rate sums. Machine our rate sums or problems. Machine our rate problems. Machine our rate problems.
done so point number one is what primary distribution of overheads then secondary distribution of overheads then absorption of overheads then from point number four to point number six take a pencil take a pencil point number four to point number six uh, sorry point number four to point number eight five six seven eight point number four to point number eight take a pencil and put a flower bracket take a pencil and put the flower put a flower bracket so you can write down deals d e a l s write it in pencil itself deals only with absorption only with absorption only with absorption so basically primary distribution secondary distribution absorption right the third point is absorption then if you see for point number four is six different types of absorption rate five is predetermined absorption rate versus actual absorption rate six is under or over absorption seventh is blanket rate versus departmental rate eighth is machine hour rate all these things revolve around what something called as absorption are you clear with this so the first two aspects alone primary distribution secondary distribution it is fine from the third point onwards third point is absorption how what is absorption all we will see from that onwards the rest of the chapter deals only with absorption and that's why the name of the chapter is called as absorption costing method are you clear with this what is absorption and all i have not entered into it right now we will be seeing what it is shall we get started guys shall we get started now guys i want you to catch up running notes certain things i will dictate certain things will be by way of a discussion that you need to catch up as a running note that is how this chapter works that is how for all for, for this purpose all the chapter that's how they work are you clear with this right and very very important chapter some students i've seen in the past they tend to skip this chapter when i ask them what they say that they don't try they are not able to understand right so basically what what they actually do is they try to mug up that is the problem i tell i tell them generally don't mug up learn it by concept you will not you will you need not take the pain to remember things this is the core of uh, absorption costing that is, this is basically the core of the first objective of our subject stock valuation profit computation this is the core of that something called as absorption costing in fact absorption costing alone is a technique of costing we will see that in marginal costing chapter we will study the difference between marginal costing and absorption costing at that point i will link but as of now you just understand as whatever i am saying as it is are you clear with this guys yes now generally this is this place where students do not understand the concept they don't understand i mean they i will not say they don't understand they don't want to they will just blindly mug up something and they will just go to the exam no if you understand this conceptually trust me trust me i i can tell you with some reasonable level of assurance you can go and teach your friends about this particular uh, concept after you watch after you finish this chapter clear with this because i have been told from a few of my students that in the uh, they go to this reading hall right so in the institute you have this reading hall sirc and all you have this reading hall there they say that generally students when they are solving sums together like for group study and all when these students they are able to handle it the other guys they ask it, it seems like what is it what is the logic for this when they are explaining then they ask like what is this clarity why do you how do you do this so now only they get to know about hows and whens of doing this particular chapter blindly if you mug up you can't handle anything are you clear with this take some little extra time understand the concept it will stay with you for a lifetime clear with this guys and this from a very very slow very very simple stage to a very complicated level of area i will take you through it is a very structured area and in the study material everything is there but it is not very structured so the structuring part the examples that i give you you should all catch up as running notes because whatever example i say today you will remember but later on when you want to revise how will you remember unless and until you catch up some running notes you just write down a small hint about the uh, example so that tomorrow you can recollect whatever i was telling you clear with this guys yes now now <clears throat> Now, first of all, understand overheads. There are broadly three types of overheads. Correct? What are the three types of overheads? Come on, guys. Production overheads, administrative overheads, and selling overheads. Now, in this chapter, broadly, if I say overheads, I am referring only to production overheads. Right? Selling and admin, specifically, I will mention when we are talking about it. 
till then when i'm just saying overheads i'm meaning only the production overheads are you clear with this now we have already seen this before manufacturing cost is broadly classified into three what what and what guys material don't turn pages please don't turn pages yes you should see tell by yourself material labor expenses just expenses under each under this category each and every one of them can be converted into direct material indirect material similarly here direct labor indirect labor correct guys similarly here it's going to be direct expense and indirect expense you guys remember this yes now i asked you to bridge these three things direct expenses call it as what prime cost correct and i asked you to take a red ink before you remember all these things and do what bridge the indirect material indirect labor indirect expenses call this as what it called this as production overheads right guys yes now 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 the first and foremost objective objective a or objective one of our subject is what stock valuation and profit computation yes or no right now let us say i am a pen manufacturer what is my stock pen now every unit of pen every unit of pen i need to value it correct so every unit of stock will be valued at full manufacturing cost guys yes or no full manufacturing cost that is direct material direct labor direct expenses plus production overheads yes or no guys yes no these three are collectively called as prime cost yes now now what is the biggest uh, advantage of prime cost all the prime cost components are readily available on a per unit level correct guys yes readily on a per unit level i know for me to produce one pen let us say i need 5 grams of plastic and each gram of plastic costs me 50 paise directly i can establish a relationship correct for me to manufacture every one unit of pen i require one labor hour and every labor hour i am paying at the rate of 5 rupees direct expense for me to produce one pen i have to generally pay a royalty of let us say 2 rupees reynolds correct so the prime cost components are readily available on a per unit level yes or no now i need to calculate the total manufacturing cost per unit yes why only then let us say i have produced 10000 units out of this i have sold 8000 units i have 2000 units remaining in stock every unit needs to be valued multiplied with the per unit cost so that i can segregate the total cost into cost of goods sold and closing stock correct or not only if i segregate my total manufacturing cost into cogs and closing stock i will be able to achieve the objective of stock valuation and profit computation because manufacturing cost expires only to the extent of cost of goods sold correct are you clear with this so for me to achieve the overall objective of stock valuation profit computation i need to first calculate the entire manufacturing cost per unit per unit level i need to manufacture i need to calculate yes on a per unit level the prime cost components are readily available whereas production overheads are not readily available on a per unit level are you clear with this example for production overheads can you tell me production overheads example factory rent guys yes factory rent supervisor salary can i say then then depreciation on machinery guys yes repairs and maintenance like this i can list down 20 30 line items also basically any indirect cost incurred inside the factory is called as production overheads now you tell me are these are these line items available on a per unit level readily no i know factory rent overall i pay a bulk figure supervisor salary that guy is tying his hands like this overseeing the work i am paying him some bulk figure machinery i am paying some depreciation i am incurring some depreciation repairs and maintenance these are not readily traceable on a per unit level are you clear with this now you can have a doubt sir what is the big deal sir what is the big deal you want to calculate the production overheads cost per unit correct 
now remember that is the objective of this chapter what is the objective of this chapter to calculate the overhead cost per unit when i say overhead cost generally we are talking about production overheads per unit of my output produced are you clear with this that is the immediate objective why only if you calculate the production overhead cost per unit, you can calculate the total manufacturing cost per unit. The prime cost components are waiting for me on a readily on a per unit level. Only if I convert this and find out the production overhead cost per unit, I can find out the manufacturing cost per unit. Yes, guys. Only if I calculate the manufacturing cost per unit, my manufacturing cost can be segregated into cost of goods sold and closing stock. Correct. And only if I do that, I'll be able to achieve my objective of stock valuation, profit computation. Are you clear with this? So first understand why you are studying this particular chapter to achieve the overall objective of stock valuation, profit computation. What is the immediate objective of this chapter? Production over at cost per unit. We need to find out. Are you clear with this? Have this clarity because without knowing why you are doing this chapter, you cannot go anywhere. That's why I'm saying have the clarity of why you are doing this. Now we need to calculate the over at cost per unit. Now. You can have a doubt. Sir, what is the big deal here? Let us say factory rent is 50,000. Okay, supervisor salary is 30,000. And your uh, depreciation, let us say, is going to be 10,000 or let's say 15,000. Repairs and maintenance, 5,000. Overall, what is the production overheads? 1 lakh rupees. Correct? 1 lakh rupees. Now, let us say I am manufacturing 10,000 pins. Correct? I am manufacturing 10,000 pins divided by 10,000 units. Per pen, that is per unit, what is the overhead cost? 10 rupees. That's all, no sir. For this, why are you keeping one chapter and making our life miserable? Right? Now, it is not as simple as it sounds. Yes, if you are dealing only in one product, absolutely fine. This is all it is. But in real life, this might not be the case. Let me give an example of Titan. You know this company called Titan? Yes. You know which company? Titan belongs to which company? Titan belongs to Tata, by the way. Yes, so Tata is the holding company of Titan. Right, now, now, Titan is in the business of what? Titan is in what business? Titan is in the business of watch manufacturing. Only that, uh, no. They also manufacture eye gears. That is your spectacles, glasses. Titan I+. Plus. Have you seen that? Yes, so they also manufacture eye gears. Right, by eye gears, I mean something like lens cart and all. So they have this eye gears also. Now, let us say Titan is also in the business of manufacturing wallets. Okay, wallets is what your purse, men's, gents accessories, right? They are also in the business of manufacturing wallets. Okay, let us say they are manufacturing three different types of products. Are you clear with this? Now, let us say all the three products are manufactured inside the same factory by incurring this one lakh rupees. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Overall, what is the, they, each and every component has their own, their own prime cost components, no doubt. But let us say, let us say the production overage of 1 lakh is a common cost incurred, let us say for manufacturing 10,000 watches, then 5,000 eye gears and 3,000 wallets. Okay, guys, are you clear with this? So with the same production facility in a particular year, Titan is manufacturing 10,000 watches, 5,000 eye gears and 3,000 wallets. Are you clear with this? Now, we need to calculate the overhead cost per unit of watch, overhead cost per unit of eye gear, overhead cost per unit of wallet. Correct. That is the objective of this chapter. Correct. Overhead cost per unit of every type of output that I, that I deal in. Correct or not? Yes. Now, you tell me. Can I say, simple sir, 1 lakh rupees divided by the total units. What is the total units? 10,000 plus 5,000 plus 8,000. 18,000 you add it. Can I do this? Can I do this? You tell me 10,000 watches plus 5,000 uh, eye gears plus uh, 3,000 wallets is equal to what? 18,000 what? You tell me 5 monkeys plus 4 donkeys is equal to what? Can you add? Can you add dissimilar items? Five monkeys plus four donkeys, you will say nine zombies. Huh? You, know, you cannot arrive at this kind of conclusion. Why? These are dissimilar items. Are they addable as such? Absolutely not. So that is the reason why. For But what I need to do? I have these bulk figures. I have these bulk figures. Correct? But at the end of the day, my objective is to calculate how much is the production overhead per unit of watch? How much is the production overhead per unit of eye gear? How much is the production overhead per unit of wallets? Correct, guys. Are you clear with this? So, 
this is the objective and now i cannot add these dissimilar items as output and say this is my total output are you clear with this so i have the bulk figures on one hand and i need to calculate the overhead cost per unit of each of the type of finished product output that i deal in and the process with which i convert this bulk figures on into per unit figures is called as absorption are you clear with this this is only called as absorption are you clear with this first are you all able to understand this right are you able to understand what is the problem here it is not as simple as taking the indirect cost dividing it by the number of units because a company can deal in multiple types of multiple types of products so i cannot do this example maruti suzuki maruti suzuki in the same factory they manufacture uh, let us say maruti alto 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 is a low end car reasonably low end car they also manufacture let us say uh, can you tell me a high end car in maruti some nexa product they are manufacturing let us say they are manufacturing a car called xl6 okay this xl6 is an advanced version of ertiga anyways right this is a seven seater car okay this is a seven seater car they are also manufacturing alto which is actually a four seater or five seater car basically now can they add 1000 altos plus 5000 xl6 model can they add like this no these are dissimilar items so it has to go it has to the uh, the apportionment of overheads that has to enter into every unit of alto and every unit of a different car needs to be done through a structured procedure yes or no guys and that is the reason why we are studying this chapter called as overheads it's not as simple as dividing total overheads divided by number of units arrive at the overhead cost per unit are you clear with this first are you able to understand the pain point here what is the issue because of which we are studying the chapter get your concepts right have the clarity why you are doing so that the entire whatever is the journey in this chapter you will start loving it that's about it clear with this guys are you clear with this now 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 <clears throat> So this I told you is an elaborate procedure, right? This over absorption is an elaborate procedure. There is a three step procedure in your absorption. The first step in absorption in this procedure, absorption costing procedure, they say, they, they told them the name of the chapter is what? Absorption costing method. So it's a three step procedure. The absorption costing method in that the first step is called as primary distribution. That is what we saw in first learning objective, right? Then the second step is called as secondary distribution and the final third step is called as absorption and this three step procedure put together is only called as absorption costing method and absorption costing method you tell me is talks about what the manner of dealing with that one component called as overheads are you clear with this so you tell me absorption costing does it deal anywhere anywhere relating to prime cost no why prime cost is already available on a per unit level what do you have to do with that it is readily available the problem is only with my production overheads so right now i need to convert the bulk figures into per unit level and how am i going to do it it's a three-step structured procedure called as primary distribution secondary distribution absorption all these things put together is only called as absorption costing method so these are the first three learning objectives we saw those are the three steps and the remaining are all some advanced issues inside this absorption costing method. Are you clear with this? That is the reason why we have so many learning objectives. Slowly, one by one, incrementally, we will learn. Are you clear with this? Yes? Fine. Now, now, how do we do it? How do we do it? So before we get started with this, before we get started with this, I will first give you an overview. Fine. Before we get started with this, I want you guys to know the clear cut distinction between three items. Now, these three items you might have already, you will have, you will have definitely already heard about these three items. But I want you guys to tell me the difference between this cost versus loss versus asset. Now, cost versus loss versus asset. Now, guys, you tell me. Cost, have you heard of cost? Yes. Loss, yes. Asset, yes. All the three words are familiar. Can you tell me what is the common thing between the three? Can you tell me what is the common thing between the three? Guys, come on, you are accounting students, intermediate level, basic 11th accounts. What is the common thing between the three? Tell me now. 
What is the common thing between the three? What is the common thing between the three? All are expenses incurred. How do you say asset is an expense incurred, is it? It's an expense incurred, but you don't have any expense. It's an expense incurred, but? Yes, you can get some benefit out of it also. Okay, so basically let me start with this. Can I say all the three are debit items? Or other words, can I say all the three involve sacrifice of some resources? That is only if I pay money, I will get a cost. Only if I pay money, I can buy an asset. Only if I am paying money and I am not getting anything out of it, that is called a loss. Correct? All the three represent sacrifice of resources. Correct? Now, now, what is the difference between these three? What is the difference between these three? Let me give you an example. Let us say, let us say, I purchased, I purchased 10,000 kgs of raw material, 10,000 kgs of raw material at the rate of rupees 10. Okay. Now, out of this 10,000 kgs, out of this 10,000 kgs, I have consumed, let us say, 8,000 kgs. I have lost, let us say, 500 kgs and I have a closing stock of raw material that is unconsumed stock of raw material is 1500 kgs. Right? Guys, yes, now you tell me, out of these three, which one is an asset, which one is a loss, which one is a cost? Guys, tell me, which one is an asset? Huh? So this 8000 kgs, at the rate of 10, I will call this as what? Cost. Cost. Okay, right. This one, lost. Lost kgs of 500. I will call this as what? Loss. Loss. Closing stock. I will call this as an asset. Why? Why? If you see, if you notice this carefully, cost refers to benefits derived. Benefits derived. Cost refers to benefits derived. That is, that is out of my 10,000 kgs, 8,000 kgs, I am putting it into my machinery and started production, correct? Which means I have already derived the benefit out of it. Yes, guys. Yes. Are you clear with this? Whereas, asset represents what? I have incurred some money, but with respect to this 1,500 units, have I derived the benefits? No, it is derivable in the future. Yes or no? Right? So, can we call this as benefits derivable? De benefits derivable. Are you clear with this? And loss represents benefits lost. At the time of purchase, I thought this 500 kgs also I will be able to use it. But somehow someone stole it or it got destroyed by fire. I paid some money, but I didn't get any benefit out of it. I call it as benefit lost. Guys, are you clear with this? Asset, so cost versus lost versus asset. Predominantly, cost is what? Cost refers to benefit derived. I have derived it. That's why I go on and debit my P&L and knock it off against my sales. I call it as an expired cost. Correct? Ah, right, guys. So pull an arrow and write down expired cost expired cost whereas loss loss it is also an expired cost it always expires no question at all it is also an expired cost whereas closing stock benefits derivable it is unexpired cost unexpired cost are you clear with this why is it called as unexpired cost because as of now, have you derived the benefit? No, it is still derivable. Sir, next year I am consuming my opening stock. Then your benefit derivable becomes benefits derived. That is in the next year, your asset gets converted into your what? Into your cost. Are you clear with this, guys? Are you clear with this? I told you this is the reason why Colin Drury calls the debit side total of your WIP account, factory, factory uh, shop account as what? Manufacturing cost accounted in the current period. Correct. Why is it? Because opening stock of WAP was an asset. But only in the current period, it turned into a cost. Are you clear with this? Right? Are you clear with this, guys? So remember, benefits derived is cost. Benefit derivable is asset. And benefit lost is a loss. Are you clear with this? Have this clarity with you. Our subject predominantly revolves around 
this cost and loss only assets we are not bothered about it much that is in your financial accounting only we don't prepare balance sheet and all that predominantly in our subject the focus is on cost and loss but you need to know the difference between all these three items are you clear with this guys yes now 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 first i told you that our absorption costing method is a three step procedure primary distribution secondary distribution absorption correct guys yes primary distribution secondary distribution absorption now <clears throat> what is your primary distribution what is your primary distribution so first we will see primary distribution so in primary distribution what we do first step we need to do is collect all the line items of indirect manufacturing cost correct what are the indirect manufacturing costs that we have examples i just told you no yes i have factory rent then supervisor salary plant machinery depreciation then repairs and maintenance correct and so on and so on i have a lot of line items let us say i have some 20 line items example only 20 will be there not necessary it can even be 10 or it can even be 50 it depends on how many line items you have correct so primary distribution says now why do you incur all this cost why do you incur all this indirect manufacturing cost because in your factory you have so many departments correct you have so many departments correct guys in your factory you have so many departments to make these departments run only you are having you are incurring all this indirect manufacturing cost correct or not so primary distribution says find out all the departments in your organization right let's say a b c and all then apportion every line item of this indirect manufacturing cost between these departments in the ratio of benefits derived it says apportion every line item of this indirect manufacturing cost in the ratio of benefits derived are you clear with this for example factory rent in my factory, I have three departments, A, B, and C. Based on the square feet area occupied by each of the department, I will apportion my overall factory rent, correct? Similarly, supervisor salary. I will apportion the supervisor salary to A, B, and C in the ratio of the number of employees working under a supervisor in each of these departments, correct, guys? Like this, every machine depreciation based on the machine value uh, located based on the machine value present in every single department repairs and maintenance based on some reasonable other base so what they are saying is 20 line items are there every line item you just give it away to all the departments of the organization of the factory in the ratio of benefits derived what is the logic because they are saying i am incurring all these expenses only for running my departments correct so these items will not belong to me these will belong to what this will belong to my particular departments are you clear with this are you clear with this i'm just giving you an overview then we will just get started with this we will write something and then we will get started with it right fine so now now are you able to understand this this is the first step of the over uh, of the absorption costing procedure are you clear with this are you clear with this guys so more detailed explanation i will make service department production department whatever it is i will just tell you but before that first you just write down you please write down notes introduction write down notes introduction guys quick 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 write down point number one you first write down introduction in green and then point number one total manufacturing cost of a product is equal to quick guys total manufacturing cost per of a product is equal to is equal to prime cost plus POH prime cost plus POH guys quick 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 prime cost plus POH line gap point number two while it is easy to identify while it is easy to identify the prime cost components 
while is it e while it is easy to identify the prime cost components on a per unit level while it is easy to identify the prime cost components on a per unit level comma tracing poh tracing poh to every units produced to every unit produced to every unit produced is difficult is difficult is difficult because is difficult because indirect costs are incurred in indirect costs are incurred in general in general for all the products indirect costs are incurred in general for all the products right point number 3 hence the objective of this chapter hence the objective of this chapter is to calculate the overhead cost per unit the objective of this chapter is to calculate the overhead cost per unit the objective of this chapter is to calculate the overhead cost per unit right then line gap write down take a green ink and write down steps in overheads accounting steps in overheads accounting steps in overheads accounting within bracket absorption costing method steps in overheads accounting within bracket absorption costing method quick guys quick show some sense of urgency so steps in overheads accounting within bracket absorption costing method write down under that point number 1 collection and classification of overheads collection and classification of overheads collection and classification of overheads immediately next point no line gap without line gap immediately adjust the next point number 2 distribution of overheads to all departments all alone write it in a red ink the word all should be written in red ink distribution of overheads to all departments all red ink all word alone red ink done within bracket call it as primary distribution within bracket call it as primary distribution within bracket primary distribution done line gap point number 3 line gap point number 3 redistribution of redistribution r e hyphen distribution of service department overheads to production departments redistribution of service department overheads to production departments within bracket secondary distribution within bracket secondary distribution within bracket secondary distribution line gap point number 4 absorption of overheads to the products line gap point number 4 absorption of overheads to the products absorption of overheads to the products done guys done perfect now take a pencil the first two points alone you put a flower bracket first two points alone you put a flower bracket generally ideally these two are a single point only okay i will explain all these things don't worry technically it's a three step procedure but i have mentioned it as four step the first two points alone ideally is a single step are you clear with this what is the first point collection and classification of overheads 
and point number two distribution of overheads to all the departments i will tell you what this is called as primary distribution now guys shall we get started shall we get started now what i will do is guys what i will do is now i will take an example of a particular industry i will give you an overview of this entire chapter three step procedure i will give you overview i will give you what we are going to do just so that you get an idea right slowly we will get introduced one by one we will start get introduced now three step procedure out of which first two step i know that you will definitely understand now it's a third step absorption alone you might not understand everything right now we will understand as we proceed into the subject clear with this i am just giving you an overview we will solve sums directly we will solve some sums and we will learn certain things we will learn by conceptual explanation certain things we will understand more by solving numerical problem so always remember for every chapter inside a subject the strategy will be different clear so if you think that only i will study like this no i am not saying subject wise also inside a subject chapter wise also the strategy should be different students generally don't identify this they think this is how i generally study let me do it no it's not like that every chapter has a different manner of studying so that is the reason why i am sequencing it in certain way so that it will definitely not hinder it will actually help you in a logical way of understanding the subject that's why i told you clearly i'm not doing the theory now because if i do the theory now it will definitely uh, disturb your logical understanding of the subject you will think about those theory aspects when you have to think about the practicalities theory you can do anytime you can even read it but the thing main the most important part is knowing how to solve the numerical problems learning why we are doing the subject that gives you a lot of satisfaction and can also give you a lot of marks in your exam clear with this guys shall we get started now now carefully listen and i want you guys to participate please participate carefully listen now let me take an example of textile industry let me take an example of textile industry you know this textile industry is popular in which place which place tirupur belt you know that tirupur belt is known for textile in fact in fact all these branded shirts that we see on the markets no it has foreign brand even the shirt that i'm wearing alan solly and all see these guys are all giving some brand they are putting some brand but you know these products get manufactured in tirupur do you know that most of the textiles get manufactured across india it gets exported also they get manufactured in tirupur but these guys put arrow or they put their own brand us polo association they put their own brand and sell our own product to our own people at a premium price and they take all the money the problem is don't think that you know quality products we get only from the us or europe and all no it is our own product these guys have just told them i want so and so quality our guys in tirupur actually for them to manufacture a particular shirt it would have costed them only 150 rupees not even beyond that these guys put their brand and they sell it for 2000 rupees in the market this is the kind of profit that the textile industry operates just a passing reference i am telling you nothing related to overheads so understand one thing just don't go by the brand you go by quality our people have good quality products just that you don't have the brand so you need not go for the brand and all right anyway this product then you might ask me sir why are you wearing an alan soli uh, shirt and all so that anyways i bought it in a factory sale some 80 percentage offer they gave so this was at par with the tirupur rate so actually that is the reason why i am wearing it don't go for the brands and go for quality that will be good now coming back to the discussion now in a textile industry now first what we need to do identify all the line items of indirect manufacturing cost do i have a problem with the prime cost components no prime cost components are readily waiting for me with the per unit prime cost components they all they readily have correct the problem is only with respect to indirect manufacturing cost or in other words called as production overage first thing what i need to do the point number 1 collection and classification of overheads meaning what first i need to identify the line items of overheads that i have in my factory guys clear what are the line items that i can have i can have factory rent guys yes i can have supervisor salary then i can have what machinery depreciation on machinery Repair. correct repairs and maintenance correct like that i can have some 20 30 line items also i can have yes guys are you clear with this first i will actually 
first find out what are all the line items that I have and I will find out, okay, factory rent is so much, supervisor salary is so much, machinery depreciation is so much, your repairs and maintenance so much, like that, all these 20 line items. Overall, this is my total production overheads. I will arrive at this. Are you clear with this, guys? Yes. Now, now, what will I do? I just told you. Why am I incurring all these indirect manufacturing costs? Because I have departments in my factory. Correct? Yes. Because I have departments in the factory, for me to run these departments, I am incurring the costs. Correct? So basically, this cost, each and every line item, should be given to all the departments that are there inside the factory. Guys, yes or no? Right? Now, now in the department, in the factory, in the factory, let us say in our textile industry, Stirpur Textile Mill. Okay? Now, let me just tell you, there are the following departments. There is a department called Spinning Department. There is a department called Weaving Department. There is a department called Printing Department. There is also a department called Factory Canteen. And there is also a department called Stores. Okay? Let us say these are the five departments in the factory. Now you tell me, spinning department, what will they do? The raw cotton is there, correct? They will spin the raw cotton and get the thread out of it, correct? Huh? That thread, what they will do? Next, they will do weaving process. That is, the shirts will be stitched, correct? But these shirts will be unbleached or they will not have any color and all. So the next color will go in the printing department, yes or no? So can I say, can I say, Spinning, weaving and printing department, these are the core departments where my product gets manufactured. Yes, guys. Yes, I call this as production departments. What do you mean by production departments? The departments where my actually raw material gets converted into my FG, through which my raw material gets passes and it gets converted into FG. These are the core departments where the production happens. I will call this as P1. I will call this as P2. I will call this as P3. Are you clear with this, guys? Yes? Now, in the factory, I also have canteen and stores. Why do you have canteen? Now, in the spinning, weaving and printing department, so many people are working. Correct? I need to give them food, you know? Yes? Now, factory canteen is located in the factory only. Is it an indirect manufacturing cost? Yes. But you tell me, will my products pass through the canteen? Will I say my product, what is my product? Men's wear, ladies wear, kids wear and all, right? Now, will every product pass through my canteen? No. So, I call this as a service department. What do you mean by a service department? A department that is there in the factory that is meant to provide service to the production departments. Are you clear with this? Or in other words, that is meant to assist the production activity. Are you clear with this? So, I call this as service department 1, service department 2. Similarly, stores are also there. No? Does the raw material manufacturing conversion happen in the stores? No. Stores is just a place where you just supply the raw material and leave it there. Yes or no, guys? Yes. So, in this case, I will say in our, in our company, we have five departments. What are the five departments? P1, P2, P3. Three production departments and two service departments. What do you mean by a production departments? The departments that actually engage in the production activity. What do you mean by service departments? The departments that facilitate or assist my production activity. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Now, primary distribution says, look, the reason why I am incurring every line item, for example, factory rent, Factory rent I am incurring for all the departments, no? even the canteen and stores are also inside the factory, correct? So, which means for the entire place only I am paying the rent. So, they are saying distribute this factory rent to all the departments, all the departments. That's why I asked you to write that all in the word red ink. Why? All means production as well as service departments, correct? Yes, in the ratio of what? In the ratio of benefits derived. Why? These are costs, no? Guys. Cost represents benefits direct. So, what is the ratio in which I should do? Reasonable ratio. Don't mug it up. In the exam, they will give you some reasonable ratio. Factory rent, for example, I will do it based on the square feet taken by each of this particular departments. Correct? Yes, guys. Similarly, supervisor salary. Supervisor salary. So, I might have even supervisors in my factory canteens and all. No. General supervisor for the entire factory I can have. Correct, guys. That guy's salary, again, I need to apportion between all the departments only. Guys, yes. In the ratio of what? In some reasonable ratio of benefits derived. It could be on the ratio of your 
uh, what do I say, in the ratio of um, your number of employees inside every single department. Correct guys, are you clear with this? Then machine depreciation. Now let's say I have a common factory building or let us say I use a common, uh, what do I say, uh, a particular air cooler or something like that, right? The entire factory is air conditioned, including my kitchens, canteens, everything. So it's a common cost. It's a common cost. Now I need to apportion it between all the departments only in the factory. Guys, yes or no? Similarly here, repairs and maintenance. If there is any repairs, the repairs can happen both in my production department or even in my factory canteen if you see. You know, it's not just simple like one gas stove, small stove you have, you cannot know. You need to have a sophisticated kitchen because you're cooking for so many thousands of people, correct? So if there is a problem anywhere here, maybe you can ask the help of your repairs and maintenance team and also get it done. Are you clear with this, guys? So basically, if there is a common cost, it needs to be apportioned between all the departments in the ratio of benefits derived. Sir, suppose repairs and maintenance are cost, but that cost is not incurred for factory canteen, then don't give any share to it, that's all. Are you clear with this? Clear with this, guys. Are you clear? So the rent can be based on your occupancy or flow rate. Your depreciation can be in the ratio of the machine value. Correct? Your power cost can be on the basis of the kilowatt hours or the units of power consumed and all. On a reasonable basis, you will apportion all these, all these individual line items of indirect manufacturing cost to these particular departments. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? So now what happens? So now what happens at the end of this process is called as what? Primary distribution. Primary distribution means what? So apportioning all these line items of indirect manufacturing cost and giving it them to all the departments is called as what? Is called as primary distribution. So now what happens? I had 20 line items of production overheads, correct? Now I gave it away to all these departments at the end of line, at the end of primary distribution, 20 line items gets converted into just five line items. Correct? Right, guys. The same amount only. The total, if you add it, it will be the same. Correct? Total amount will be the same. But instead of 20 line items, that each of these line items lose their identity. And now the line items of overheads become becomes departmental overheads. Correct or not? So I will call this as P1 overheads is so much. P2 overheads is so much. P3 overage is so much, S1 overage is so much, S2 overage is so much. Inside each and every one of this, each, will, each and every one of these figures will have a share of factory rent, share of supervisor salary and all these things will be there. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? You are able to understand. Yes. So basically what we do in primary distribution, line items of expenses get converted into all department overheads using the ratio of benefits derived. Are you clear with this? In this case, in our example, 20 line items gets converted into 5 line items. 5, always is it going to be 5? No, it's not like that. In our example, we have 5 departments. That's all. Are you clear with this? Right? So at the end of primary distribution, 20 line items got converted into 5 line items. Figure, the total figure of overage will be the same. Are you clear with this? That will not change. Clear with this? No. No. Next, we have secondary distribution. We have secondary distribution. What do you mean by secondary distribution? Now, guys, you tell me, why do you have these two service departments in the factory? Why do you have these two service departments in the factory? To assist the production departments. Correct. So, technically speaking, technically speaking, the overhead share given to these service departments should also belong to only the production departments. Why? Ultimately, why do you have these service departments? To assist the production departments only. Guys, are you clear with this? So what secondary distribution says is, now redistribute the service department overheads back to the production department overheads. Are you clear with this? They are saying factory canteen, whatever is the share, now you give it to the production department based on the number of employees, some reasonable ratio on the ratio of services rendered on the ratio of services rendered services rendered ratio you apportion for example stores on the basis of number of raw materials requisitions number of raw material requisitions number of times i requested for raw materials so based on that you apportion the store's particular share of overheads are you clear with this so basically what does secondary distribution say Secondary distribution says the service department overheads should be redistributed. Why redistributed? Why the word re we are using? Because originally it was not a factory canteen overheads or stores overheads. This figure itself I got by primary distribution. Correct? 
the distributed figure i am once again distributing it's called as redistribution are you clear with this every word has a logic behind it every word has a logic behind it look at this so redistribution or the secondary distribution stands for what Sec, uh, your service department overheads redistributing it back to your production department in what ratio services rendered ratio what is the logic because the presence of service departments is only to assist my production department. So whatever is my share, I need to give it to you only. Are you clear with this? At the end of secondary distribution, five line items get converted into just three line items. That is, your, you will just have three figures here. Guys, correct? Uh, right? What are the three figures you will be having at the end of your, at the end of your um, secondary distribution? You have P1 department overheads. P2 department overheads, P3 department overheads. That's all. Are you clear with this? But if you total it up, if you total these three things up, you will get what? The total that will still match with everything. Are you clear with this? The total will not be different. So 20 line items got converted into 5 line items in primary distribution. Now the 5 line items got converted into 3 line items at the end of secondary distribution. Are you clear with this? At the end of secondary distribution, I only have the production departmental overheads all the line items got converted into production department overheads are you clear with this p1 p2 p3 overheads three figures only i have clear with this guys yes now now okay now you tell me you tell me now why do we have why are we doing this particular chapter what is the objective of this particular chapter what is the objective of this particular chapter Calculate the overhead cost per unit of each of the type of material or each of the type of products that I deal in. Correct, guys? Yes. Now, now let me do the absorption part here. Let me do the absorption part, the third part. So I'm continuing it. Okay. So now at the end of secondary distribution, what is it that we have? We have P1 department overheads, P2 departments overheads, P3 department overheads. Guys, correct? Uh, yes, guys. This is these are the three figures that I've got. Now, now let us say our company is what? Tirupur Textile, Textile Mill, right? Now, our company deals in four products. Let us say, example, four products. What are the four products? Menswear, menswear, ladieswear, kidswear, and let us say footwear, okay? Footwear also these guys deal in. Example, Reliance Strengths. They also deal in footwares, footprint and all, right? There's a separate company called Reliance Footprint. You know that? Reliance Trends is there, Reliance Footprint is there. That is different. Anyways, coming back here. They deal in four types of products. Let us assume menswear means only one type of menswear. No, again, inside menswear, don't think that shirt, pant, so many things, car dry or uh, your uh, chinos. No, I'm not talking about multiple products. Assume that this is only one product in menswear they deal in. Okay, clear. This is just for an example purpose for you to get the point. Ladies wear, let us say they manufacture only one type of ladies wear, salwar kameez or whatever it is. Kids wear, one type of kids wear and footwear, one type of footwear, correct? The company deals only in four types of products, four output only, they have four different types of output. Correct guys? Yes. Now, now, I have what with me? 20 line items got converted into five line items, five line items got converted into three line items, correct? Now, I need to convert these three line items into overhead cost per unit of menswear. Over at cost per unit of ladies wear, over at cost per unit of kids wear, over at cost per unit of footwear. Correct. Uh, right? Yes, guys. This is what I need to find out. Correct. But I have the figures in bulk. These are some bulk figures. This could be 1 lakh. This could be what? Uh, 2.5 lakhs. This could be another 1.5 lakh. Whatever it is. But I need to calculate what is the over at cost per unit of men's wear, over at cost per unit of ladies wear, per unit of kids wear and per unit of footwear. Are you clear with this? How am I going to do so the way in which I convert the production overheads into the overhead cost per unit of each of my products is called as absorption. Are you clear with this? How we are going to do it, I am not going to tell you right now. In a few minutes from now or later on, we will just be seeing. First, let us focus on primary and secondary distribution. Once we master that, then we will get into the absorption phase. Slowly, I will enter into it. This is where the subject becomes little technical. Are you clear with this, guys? Primary, secondary distribution are relatively easier. Absorption is where the subject gets into, gets, gets little technical. So basically, in absorption, the third phase of this three-step procedure, what will you do? You have production overheads on one side. 
how am I going to convert these production overheads into overhead cost per unit of each and every product that I deal in? The manner in which I do it is called as absorption. Are you clear with this? How to do absorption? I have not told you it. So at the end of this particular procedure, what will you get? You will get the production overhead cost per unit of men's wear, correct? Production overhead cost per unit of ladies wear, production overhead cost per unit of kids wear and production overhead cost per unit of footwear, correct? Right, this is our objective. Yes, we will be able to achieve this objective through a bridge. So this is a bridge. Fine, you have a gap between this, correct? Bulk figures and per unit figures. So how do you bridge the gap using a procedure called as absorption? What it is, we will be seeing, we will be learning from it in detail. First, let us finish the first two phases and then we'll go to the third phase later on. Are you clear with this, guys? Yes, and this three-step procedure of converting your individual, individual line items of indirect cost into overhead cost per unit is called as absorption costing method. Are you clear with this, guys? Are you clear with this? Now, now, let me tell you one more very, one more important thing. There is an advanced or a very modern way of converting the independent, individual, indi uh, indirect cost are there, no? That is 20 line items. There is a much better way. There is a modern way of converting these 20 line items of expenses into per overhead cost per unit. There is a modern or a better way of calculating the overhead cost per unit. And that modern way of calculating that is only called as ABC, activity based costing, which is the next chapter. Are you clear with this? So basically the next chapter objective is the same. Calculate the overhead cost per unit, but, but. The manner in which we are going to calculate the overhead cost per unit alone is going to be different. And is ABC better or absorption costing this, uh, this particular uh, overhead chapter, is this better? Technically, ABC, is method, ABC, be, be, uh, ABC method is better. But in this chapter, absorption costing, apart from this three-step procedure that we saw, there are so many other things that we saw, no? right? On like six types of absorption rates, under or over absorption, the rich concepts. So those rich concepts are equally applicable for ABC. Are you clear with this? So don't think that in ABC chapter that we are going to study is very, very simple. The more complicated part we will be studying in this particular chapter over it. Are you clear with this? An advanced way of apportioning my, of converting my bulk figures, indirect cost into overhead cost per unit is called as ABC that we will be doing in the next chapter. Are you clear with this? So please understand one thing, uh, overhead chapter and ABC are actually you know, two chapters that are interlinked, closely interlinked that deal with the manner of overheads only. They talk about the manner of dealing with overheads only. Are you clear with this guys? Are you clear with this, right? So now tell me what do you mean by primary distribution? What is primary distribution? Guys, come on, tell me now. Tell me now, yes. Yeah. So P1, P2, sorry. What do you mean by primary distribution? What do you do in primary distribution? You, you have line items of expenses. That line items of expenses should be converted into all department overheads. Correct. Then secondary distribution, what will you do? Service department overheads needs to be redistributed back to the production departments. Now, one thing, in primary distribution, all line items of expenses should be distributed to my, uh, uh, line items of in, indirect costs should be distributed to my, all the departments in what ratio? In what ratio? In the ratio of benefits derived. Please remember, please remember, in the ratio of benefits derived. Correct? So, reasonably, we will be able to find out. Factory rent example. You can take the floor space and so on. Clear. Next, service department overheads be redistributed back to my production departments. In what ratio? In what ratio? I told you something. Come on, you guys should remember. This is not fair. What ratio I told? Yes, you tell me. What ratio? Service department overhead should be redistributed back to the production ratio, production department in? To the level of a services rendered ratio. Guys, you should, you should definitely be alert. I am not telling something just like that. This is the reason why I'm asking you to catch up notes. Please, you can't, you cannot be little lethargic and all. No, you need to answer this. Fine. Services rendered ratio. And finally, what happens? Finally, what happens? Your, your production department overheads will be, uh, you need to trace it on a per unit level to all the products using a method called as absorption. Are you clear with this, guys? Are you clear with this? This is the overall overview, the big picture of this particular chapter.
are you clear with this guys yes now with this with this let's get started with question number one question number one is about primary distribution first let us do that question number one and we will just uh, finish this particular phase one of this and then we will move to phase two secondary distribution please take your handbook please take your handbook so all these theoretical explanations they have given so this is what we are studying so i have already explained all these things by way of our notes so if you want to read you can read all these things uh, i have just kept everything that theory part i have just kept everything as per the institute study material but logical way of understanding i'm doing it in the classroom now guys come on questions for classroom discussion question number one question number one guys i want you all to be attentive participate and i want you guys to answer quickly have the spontaneity somehow i feel somewhere it's lagging no it cannot be like this definitely it cannot be like this come on we are already two chapters into the subject you can still not continue with your comfort zone come out of it that's the way to learn come out of your comfort zone answer what other work do we have right now this is our only work do it right now the following figures are extracted from the accounts of a manufacturing concern for the period of september 20 x1 indirect materials p1 p2 p3 s1 s2 so department wise they have given how much is the indirect materials available clear indirect material cost then then indirect wages p1 p2 p3 s1 s2 figures are given all the department wise clear right then Power and light, 6,000 rupees. Insurance on assets, 1,000 rupees. Rents and rates, 2,800. Meals charges, 3,000 rupees. Fine. Now, these are some common expenses. Correct? These are some common expenses. So, we need to apportion this to all the departments. In what ratio? The service, uh, the benefits derived ratio, which uh, the hint for that will be given down. We will be seeing it. Clear with this. But there is no problem with respect to indirect material, indirect wages. Why? They themselves have apportioned it between the departments and they have given department wise. I can identify this is the cost. Are you clear with this? Maybe only these are the common costs we have. Are you clear with this? Common cost only needs to be apportioned. Clear? Whereas these costs are readily available on a department wise, not a per unit wise, department wise. So the cost, indirect cost readily available on department basis itself is called as allocated overheads it's called as allocated overheads whereas the common overheads that needs to be apportioned between multiple departments is called as apportioned overheads so overheads can be allocated or apportioned allocated means what readily on a department wise they are available whereas apportioned means what it is a common cost incurred for all the departments using the ratio of benefits derived i need to apportion it are you clear with this right i hope you are scribbling it somewhere you need to do all these things guys again i will ask you somewhere if you blink then it is not fair now next depreciation on capital uh, assets and the value of capital assets is six percentage from the above information prepare a primary distribution summary with the following departmental data so production cost centers and service cost center p1 p2 p3 s1 s2 area has been given so in square meters so p1 uh, department p1 takes 4000 square meters p2 takes 4000 p3 takes 3000 s1 takes 2000 and s2 takes 1000 clear Similarly, capital value of assets department wise given kilowatt in thousands kilowatt hours is also given department wise number of employees is also given department wise. Now guys, can we prepare this primary distribution table? What should you do in primary distribution table? You tell me line items of expenses should be converted into all department overheads at the end of primary distribution. What happens is line items of expenses will lose their identity and they all get converted into P1, P2, P3, S1, S2 overheads. Are you clear with this? Yes. And how will you do it on the basis of benefits derived? So now you tell me power and light, power and light. What is the uh, basis on which you will do? Kilowatt hours. Then insurance on assets. Insurance on assets, assets capital value, then rent and rates, rent and rate, area, correct, meal charges, number of, number of employees, as simple as that. How about this one, indirect material, indirect wages, already done on all the department wise. Guys, are you clear with this? Yes, let's get started. I will give you the template. Let's quickly get started. Very simple, nothing great here. You just need to understand the logic why you are doing it. That's all. So question number one green ink write down primary distribution summary primary 
distribution summary primary distribution summary now write down particulars particulars basis then you have p1 p2 p3 s1 s2 p1 p2 p3 are production departments s1 and s2 what happened are service departments yes yes if you want you can also write total mm, yes if you want you can also write total uh do you have a space then you can also insert the total column if you want no it's okay right guys shall we start shall we start guys be quick be quick come on let's get started let's get started this is an easy part come on Number one, write down what is the first line item. I want I want you guys to tell me. There's no point in me doing it. You are appearing for the exam. Tell me how what is it? Tell me, guys. Indirect materials. Yes, write it. Write it. What is the basis? The basis, don't write given. Write it as direct allocation. Write it as direct allocation. Right? They themselves have allocated. Right? How much? How much? How much? How much? How much? 950, 1200, then. 200 then 1500 then 400 that's about it line gap line gap number two line gap what is the second item indirect wages yes basis direct allocation figures figures 900 1100 300 huh thousand six fifty right guys are you clear with this right then Power. third what is the third line item guys come on come on power and light power and light power and light now power and light should be on the basis of what uh, on the basis of kilowatt hours write down kilowatt hours correct now 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 under this power and light you write down the ratio in which we are going to apportion so kilowatt hour is what ratio guys kilowatt hour it is going to be can i say 40 is to 44 is to 16 is to 15 is to 5 yes, correct ah yes, guys yes write down here write down here 40 is to 44 is to 16 is to 15 is to 5 clear now 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 guys what is the total power and light cost that we needs to get apportioned here? 6000 well, hello guys, tell me. 6,000. 6, right? Now tell me, how will you apportion this? I, I, I taught you how to use a calculator. You remember that? Yes, First, 40 plus 44 plus 16 plus 5 plus 5. How much is it? 120. Yeah? Right? So what you need to do, what is the power and light cost that needs to get apportioned? 6,000. Right? So 6,000 into 40 by 120 will be the first figure. 6,000 into 44 by 120 will be the second figure. 6,000 into 16 by 120 will be the third figure and so on. So basically in all the figures, 6,000 and that divided by, what is it divided by? 120. 6,000 by divided by is common. Correct. Ah, right. So do that. 6,000 divided by 120. How much is it? Guys, 50. Correct. So can I say 15 to 40 will be the first figure. 15 to 44 will be the second figure. 15 to 16 will be the third figure and so on. Guys, correct. Ah, right. Lose, use this calculator. So, 6000 divided by 120 is equal to, you get this figure 50, what should you do now? Into, into, click that multiply button twice, click that multiply button twice, then 40 is equal to write down. Just type 40 is equal to write down. How much you get? Guys, 2000, then don't do anything. Sorry? 2000 is the first figure, right? Now, what will you do? 44 is equal to, then write down, 2200. Then 16 is equal to how much? 800. Then 15 is equal to how much? 750. 5 is equal to how much? 
250. Tell me how quickly you were able to do it. Guys, yes. So now, now always remember, so this apportionment, first do the total, then the respective cost divided by total, that figure you will get. In this case, 50, yeah, 50. Click the into button twice, into, into, 40 is equal to write down, 44 is equal to write down, 16 is equal to write down, 15 is equal to write down, 5 is equal to write down. Are you clear with this, guys? This trick, please follow. It might not be comfortable right now, but once you start using it, you will thank yourself. It will save a lot of time in your exam. Then fourth step, fourth point. Fourth point, what is it? Insurance on assets. Basis. 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 Yes, capital value of assets. Write on capital value of assets. Yes. So what is the ratio of capital value of assets? Capital value of assets. 100, 120, 80, 60, 40. All of these are divisible by 20 now. Guys. Guys, all of these are divisible by 20. Yes, sir. So can I say this is 5 is to 6 is to 4 is to 3 is to 2. I is correct. Right. If you don't want to simplify, you need not even simplify. So write down 5 is to 6 is to 4 is to 3 is to 2. Add it up. How much is it? 15, 20. Guys, correct. So 5 plus 6 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 20. So how much is the insurance on assets? How much is it? 1000, right? So 1000 divided by 20 is equal to, you get the same 50 into into. 5 is equal to write down. How much? 4 is equal to write down. Four, uh, 6 is equal to write down. 4 is equal to 3 is equal to 2 is equal to. How much? How much? How much? Figures. Guys, one one click of a second, you should tell me. Huh? 250? 300. 300. Huh? 200. 150. 100. Clear? Are you able to do this? Are you able to do this? Follow this calculator trick. In this sum, I'm going slow. The next to some are not calculations. You should tell me by the time I finish writing this particulars. Right? Then fifth point. Guys, what is this? Rent and rates. Rent and rates. What is the basis? Area. Come on, guys. Tell me. It's going to be area. Right? Tell me the ratio. Guys, please participate. Tell me the ratio. 4 is to 4 is to 3. 4 is to 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. Write down. Write down here. 4 is to 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. 4 is to 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1. So 4 plus 4 is 8. So 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 3 plus 1. So it's going to be 14, right? Yes, 14. So now what is the rent? 2,800. 2,800 divided by 14 is equal to, you get a figure, into into 4 is equal to 800. 4 is equal to 800. 3 is equal to 600. 2 is equal to how much? 400. And 1 is equal to 200. Guys, correct? Right? Shall we move to the next one? Yes, you guys are using the calculated trick. 6 to 1. Right on. What is the 6 to 1? Meal charges. Meal charges. Manner of apportionment. Number of employees. Yes, it's going to be number of employees. Right. Now, tell me the ratio. Number of employees. 9 is to 12 is to 3 is to 4 is to 2. Correct. Right on. 9 is to 12 is to 3 is to 4 is to 2. So, add it up. So, how much does it come out to? So, 9 plus 12 is... Uh, 21 plus 3, uh, 24 uh, plus 4 is 28 plus 2 is 30. Correct? So, 3000 divided by 30 is equal to 10 into into 9 is equal to 2 is equal to 3 is equal to 4 is equal to and 2 is equal to. So, how much is that? Sorry, it's going 90. Yeah? Sorry, 90. Oh, one second, guys. This is how much? It's coming out to 30, is it? So, 9 plus 12 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2 gives you 30. Right? So, 3000 divided by 30 gives you 100. 100 into into 9 is equal to 12 is equal to 3 is equal to 4 is equal to 2 is equal to so it's going to be 900 1200 300 400 200 done right so all the items are done shall we total it shall we total it guys yes yes then take a red ink take a red ink observation skills guys small small things cannot cost you an attempt Read the question. What have you missed out? Just because they have given only these things in the table, will you will you ignore this line? Take a red ink and write. Take a red ink and write. Definitely not acceptable. Definitely not acceptable. This is the pass percentage. And we say CA course is difficult. What is this difficulty here? See, our job is to full have full focus here. How can you miss this out? Definitely not acceptable, guys. Come on, write down in a red ink. Depreciation on capital value. So write down seventh point reading item. 
entirely write it in writing. You missed it. You need to know that. When you are revising, you need to know. Write down depreciation. So how much is depreciation? It's 6 percentage on capital value. 6 percentage on capital value. So right, this is going to be capital value. That is the basis. So write on 0 0.06 into into. You can write on the figures. 0 0.06 into into. Very good. Very good. I wanted you guys to calculate that. Very good. Right. Come on. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Tell me. Tell me. So tell me guys. 6 percentage per annum. So 0 0.06 into. So you have the department wise capital value of machines. Guys. Correct. Yes, right guys. But wait, this is per annum. This is per annum. What have they given in this question? What have they given in the question? This is for the month, which means how will you calculate 6 percentage into cap into 1 by 12 into the capital value of the respective asset? Guys, correct, guys. Yes, so 0 0.06 in divided by 12 is equal to you get 0 0.005 into into. Now you can put this. Now you can put this. So how much is that? So into into first hundred thousand. How much is this? Hundred thousand is is equal to write down five hundred. Then then the second figure is what? The second figure is what? One twenty thousand is equal to six hundred. Then eighty thousand is equal to four hundred. Then. 60,000 is equal to 300, then 40,000 is equal to 200. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Right? One second. So 500, 600, 400, 300, 200, right? 400, 300, 200. Guys, you tell me, is this, is this an avoidable mistake? Easily you could have avoided, right? You could have easily avoided. Look, small lapses. Our focus is going. That is the reason why we are missing. Don't complain the course. Please don't complain the course. If we be careful, then automatically things will fall in place. And as a habit, leave a line gap and then do the total. And call this total as primary distribution summary. Primary distribution summary. Primary distribution summary. So tell me, P1 overheads, how much is it? 6,300. 6,300. Good. Then... 7400 good 2800 good 45 then 2000 right 2000 are you clear with this guys are you clear with this yes guys are you clear with this yes. simple sum look at the mistake that you guys have done definitely not acceptable guys tell yourself that i am not telling this to demotivate you it is not acceptable i am telling this because you should know that you have committed this mistake you should never repeat it in the exam Right now, you have committed it fine. No, that is not fine. But anyways, at least learn from your mistakes. Guys, clear? Clear? Deliberately institute. They do this. They don't put, they, they just put one or two items. They will hide it somewhere in a paragraph. You will also, human nature, psychology, they know. Only whatever is there in the column, we will take it. We will ignore these things because we will think that is meant for only some explanation. No. Be very careful. Have that alertness. In exam three hours, it should you should be at the peak of your productivity. Every single thing you should be alert. That is the reason why I'm training you like this in the classroom and making you write it in a red ink. This is the only reason. I don't. I am not getting any uh, happiness by pointing out your errors. This will help you out in the exam, and I will be the first happiest person to actually know that you have rectified all these things in the exam. Clear with this, guys? Yes. Now, now, now. Just for your understanding. Just for your understanding. Now, what are the different line items of indirect cost we had? Tell me, guys, in this question, indirect materials, Material how much was it? No, no, you tell me how much was the figure? Uh, 950 plus 1200 plus 200 plus 1500 plus 400. Uh, how much is that? So it was 4250, right? Similarly, indirect wages. So 900 plus 1100 plus 300, all these things, how much is it? 3950. How much was the power cost 6, given in the question? 6000. Right. How much is the insurance? 1000. How much was the rent? How much was the rent? 2800. Then how much is the meal? Meal cost? 3000. How much is depreciation? 2000. Total depreciation? 2000. Depreciation total is going to be 2000. Right. That is 500 plus 600 plus 400 plus 300 plus 200. Right. What is the total? What is the total? 
of my production overheads. Tell me guys, add it up. Tell me how much is it? 23,000. It's going to be 23,000. If you add all the line items of indirect manufacturing cost, it is coming to 23,000. Guys, correct. Right? Now, what you do, what you do, you add this P1, P2, P3, S1, S2. Add these five figures. How much do you get? Add these five figures. How much do you get? Add these five figures. How much do you get? The same 23,000. Yes, guys. So, the objective of primary distribution is what? The line items of expense will lose its identity and they will get converted into all department overheads. The same 23,000 instead of being presented as a line item, it is now presented as P1 overheads, P2 overheads, P3 overheads, S1 overheads, S2 overheads. Are you clear with this guys? The total will still remain the same but I have just converted all these line items into just five figures. In this example, it is five figures. Are you clear with this guys? Any problem here? Are you all able to understand? And this is called as what? Primary distribution. And the total is called as primary distribution summary. Why it is called as summary? Because now I have summarized all these figures and I have said how much is P1 over its, P2 over its, P3 over its, S1 over its, and S2 over its. Are you clear with this, guys? Is everyone able to understand this? Yes? Right. So with this, we have finished this particular question. Go and update your library of adjustments. Write down. Go and update your library of adjustments. Write down. Write down. All the cross-referencing you give, write down primary distribution, that's all. Primary distribution. Done guys, shall we move to the next one? Shall we move to the next one? Fine. Now, now, after primary distribution, what is the second phase? What is the second phase of our discussion? Redistribution. Secondary distribution. Correct? Now, in secondary distribution, now, how many methods did I tell you? How many methods did I tell you? Learning objectives. Four. Learning objectives. Four. Uh, please, please, come on, tell me how many objectives I said. Let's be alert in the classroom. Five. I, how many methods? Five methods I told, right? Now, broadly, I will classify this into three. The first method is called as direct redistribution method. Second method is called as step ladder method or it's also known as step method or also known as non-reciprocal method. The third method is called as Reciprocal services method. Reciprocal services method. And under this third method, you have three methods. You have three methods. One is called as, so what was the first one I got? I told you C. What was the C thing I told you? Okay. Repeated distribution method. Repeated distribution method. Then simultaneous equation method and then you have trial and error method. This is how it should look like. This is how it should look like. So you broadly have three methods of secondary distribution direct method, stepladder method and reciprocal services method. This reciprocal services method has three sub methods. Under that it has three methods. One is called as repeated distribution method. Then you have simultaneous equation method and then you have your trial and error method. Are you clear with this? Now we will see when to use what methods and all. This is the subject matter of discussion. And I will dictate a few things you can write down that whenever I'm dictating. First, understand this. Done, guys. Done. Quickly, you just scribble something. All these things you have just got up running notes. Now. Now, guys, tell me. Now, what is this secondary distribution method? What do we do in secondary distribution? P1, P2, P3, S1, S2. 
right now what do we do in secondary distribution now we distribute the service department overheads back to the production departments or in other words at the end of secondary distribution what should be my objective i should have only my production department overheads p1 p2 p3 overheads correct the s1 and s2 should be zero and everything every overheads given to s1 and s2 should be redistributed back to my production department this is my objective correct ah, right yes now sir for this how am i going to in what ratio will i distribute it to my production departments in what ratio will i distribute it services rendered ratio perfect now why do we have different methods for secondary distribution that is what i am going to tell right now now students think generally if you mug it up students generally think that okay any of the method i can use anywhere no no there is a logic for every method only when a particular criteria is fulfilled you can use direct method only when a particular criteria is fulfilled you can use step method only when a particular criteria is fulfilled you can use reciprocal method in reciprocal services method you can use any of the three formulas it will give you the same answer so under reciprocal it is fine but when to use each of these three methods there is a logic for that and it was tested once in the exam they didn't give you which method they were indirectly asking you for a particular method and they wanted you to identify it by yourself clear with this what is it is what we are going to study here clear with this guys now 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 first what is the first method direct redistribution method when will i use i am not saying how i am just saying when will i use a direct redistribution method p1 p2 p3 s1 s2 right now let us say this s1 both these s1 and s2 are service departments correct guys yes let us say s1 s1 let us say is a stores department and let us say s2 is a repairs and maintenance department clear with this guys clear with this s1 is stores department s2 is what repairs and maintenance department clear with this guys yes sir. yes now now you tell me stores departments stores department what will they do they will supply raw material to the to the factory that is to the production departments yes. it provides services to p1 p2 p3 no doubt you tell me will the stores department provide any service to the other s2 department that is uh, repairs and maintenance department will they provide any service to repairs and maintenance department no repairs and maintenance department what do they do they provide the repairs and maintenance of all the machines correct they provide that service the machines are generally present only in p1 p2 p3 correct so this s2 department repairs and maintenance department they provide services to the production departments no doubt will they provide any service to the stores department guys will they provide any service to the stores department no or or in other words in this case when there is absolutely no relationship between the service departments when there is no relationship between the service departments then we will use this direct redistribution method are you clear with this that is when there is no give or a take between the service departments then i will actually go and use this direct redistribution method are you clear with this guys are you clear with this yes are you all clear with this yes yes clear with this guys done done are you clear with this yes understandable yes so when will you use direct redistribution method when there is absolutely no relationship between the service department correct that is the service departments every service department provides services only to the production departments between the service departments there is no relationship at all are you clear with this yes guys yes second step method step method p1 p2 p3 s1 s2 let us say in this example let us say in this example s1 is a factory canteen yes two is actually let us say repairs and maintenance repairs and maintenance guys clear yes sir. yes now factory canteen you tell me guys factory canteen no doubt they provide services to the production departments yes now you tell me factory canteen do they provide services to 
the other repairs and maintenance department yes, guys yes even the repairs and maintenance staff are also human beings they can also come and eat food you know will i say no no i am not allowing you i will not let you eat food in my canteen absolutely not correct now now sir s1 department provides services to s2 department guys correct yes 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 but s2 department is what repairs and maintenance do they provide any service to factory canteen no sir no why because in factory canteen sophisticated machines and all are not there correct so s2 department will not provide any service to s1 are you clear with this yes. guys are you clear with this or in other words in this case there is only a one way traffic correct huh? there is only a one way traffic what do you mean by one way traffic between any two service departments there is either a give or a take there cannot be both or there cannot be nothing also there can only be a one way traffic if there is one way traffic if there is one way traffic i will classify i will have to use the step ladder method to actually do my second redistribution are you clear with this guys yes are you clear with this please don't mug up all these things are filled with logics clear with this right now now can i give you an example you tell me whether this comes under step ladder method or not can you guys identify so p1 p2 p3 this is not at all relevant for us anyways all the service departments are meant for servicing the production departments but between the service departments what is the relationship that is what is important for us to identify which method of secondary distribution we need to use let us say i have let us say i have guys please listen carefully i have three service departments okay let us say s1 provides services to s2 right right s2 provides services to s3 s3 provides services to s1 clear now tell me is this a case of step method or not is this a case of step method or not yes or no no means why yes means also why no you are saying first you tell me no why no 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 i just want to know whether it is a one way traffic that's all i want to know it is not one way traffic why why is it not one way traffic okay s3 provides service to s1 seri tell me no so you are saying here s1 gives provides services as well as it is receiving service here you are saying s3 it receives services as well as it is providing service s2 it actually receives service it is also providing service so you are saying one way traffic is not there correct no between two service departments there should be a one way traffic if you take s1 and s2 s1 is providing services to s2 is s1 receiving any services from s2 guys guys tell me no between s1 and s2 there is only one way traffic correct take s2 and s3 s2 provides services to s3 does s2 receive any services from s3 no between s2 and s3 there is only one way traffic correct take s1 and s3 s1 does s1 provide any services to s3 no it receives services from s3 yes which means you take any two departments at a time and check the one way traffic relationship between them if there is only one way traffic then in that case what you will do you will use the step method are you clear with this so this one way traffic should be seen for two departments at a time two service departments at a time don't think that a department can only receive or it can only give no it can either give or receive from a particular department so here s1 can provide services to s2 and it can receive services from s3 there is no problem about that are you clear with this guys please understand very very tricky thing please understand small but it's very tricky clear with this are you able to understand so one way traffic means what one way traffic between two service departments at a time clear with this i am not saying a service department cannot both provide and receive no i am not saying that i am saying it cannot provide and receive services from the same department correct i can provide to one department receive from another department absolutely fine clear i should maintain one way traffic with another department that's all with s2 i can maintain give or take with with s3 i can again maintain give or take that's all with the particular department i cannot maintain both give and take are you clear with this guys are you clear with this any issue here any issue here clear with this are you clear with this right but, right uh, assuming we are calculating the overhead uh, for some department 2 alone 
assuming i'm calculating overheads for service department 2 alone now wouldn't it already include service department 1 is overhead also? yes 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 we will see we will see we will see how to do that how to do and all i will no, see in that in that case it, this logic of one way transfer doesn't apply because, because when service department 2 is providing service to 3 it is already considering the overhead of service 1 also directly directly S1 should not provide services to, I mean, if S1 is providing service to S2, directly it should not receive services from S1. S1 is providing services to S2, it cannot directly receive any services from S2. That's all I'm saying. Directly. Are you clear with this? When we are apportioning how it goes and all, we will see later. Clear? Directly, a department should maintain only a one-way relationship, one-way traffic between another department. Clear with this or not? Clear with this or not? Directly, I should maintain only. You are asking me, sir, in this case, you tell me, S2 provides services to S3 and indirectly S3 has a share of S2 in it and S3 provides services to S2. So, technically, S1 receives services from S2 indirectly through S3 and all you are saying, no, 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 don't worry about all that. I'm just saying directly with another department, I can maintain one-way traffic alone. If I maintain one-way traffic, it is a fit case for step method. Step method is also known as reciprocal, non-reciprocal method. Why? Reciprocity means what? Reciprocity means both give and take. Reciprocity of services, they will say. Reciprocity means what? Two-way traffic. Correct? There is no two-way traffic. It's called as non-reciprocal services method. Are you clear with this? Right? Then 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 third is called as what reciprocal services method reciprocal services method now guess what is reciprocal services method so so there will be a two-way traffic that is between two departments there is both give as well as a take are you clear with this guys are you clear with this guys are you able to understand right are you able to understand Yes, so when you have a two-way traffic, when you have a two-way traffic, when you have a two-way traffic, then the secondary distribution should ideally be carried out using reciprocal services method. Under reciprocal services method, you can use any of the three methods. What are the three methods? Repeated distribution method, simultaneous equation method, and trial and error method. Are you clear with this? What are all these things? We will see later. Clear with this, guys? Yes? Now, now, now. One more example I'm giving you. In this case, let us say S1, S2, there is also a service department called S3. Yes, sir. Correct? Now, now understand, understand. What I'm saying is, look, here S2 provides services to S3. Guys, 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 understand. Very important. S1 provides services to S2. Yes. S2 provides services to S1. Yes. S2 provides services to S3. Does S3 receive any, does S3 provide any services to S2? No. Here there is a two-way traffic. Sir, but here there is a one-way traffic. Which method will I do? Which method will I do? Don't say for these two departments, I will use reciprocal services for this department step ladder. No, you can only take one method and do it. So when there is, when there is in any of this relationship, if you find a two-way traffic anywhere, then it comes under reciprocal services method. That's all. Are you clear with this? If you find a two-way traffic anywhere, there need not be necessarily two-way traffic between all the departments. If you find a two-way traffic anywhere, then okay. It means that this sum needs to be done under reciprocal services method. Are you clear with this, guys? Are you clear with this? It is the most superior method of all the methods. We will be seeing what it is and all. Are you clear with this? Guys, you're clear with this? So first, tell me broadly, how many methods of secondary distribution are there? Come on. Three. What are they? Direct, direct redistribution method when will you use Only when there is no traffic when there is no traffic if you want write it down no traffic right then second second step method also known as step ladder method also known as non reciprocal method huh when will you use it when there is a one way traffic brilliant and third third reciprocal services method when will you use it when you have a two way traffic are you clear with this guys Quickly write down, please quickly write down the notes that I have to dictate. Just quickly write this down, guys. Write down. Take the heading, secondary distribution. In green ink, secondary distribution heading. Quickly, I will just dictate the notes. And then we will conclude the session. Guys, done? Write down. Write down. Write down.
write down bullet point at the end of primary distribution at the end of primary distribution the overheads are with all the departments the overheads are with all the departments all maybe you can write it in red or you can underline it whatever it is the overheads are with all the departments the overheads are with all the departments within bracket production and service departments within bracket production and service departments within bracket production and service departments write down next bullet point the next step is to distribute the service department overheads back to the production departments the next step is to distribute the service department overheads back to the production departments please write this please write this even the ones who are attending the recorded sessions please write this please write it in your notebook so once you finish watching the lecture it should be like you should never even watch this lecture again everything should be there in your notebook and it should be there in your mind that should be the level of note taking because we don't have the luxury of time you watch thousand times one subject how can you watch so many times you don't have the time so please follow this whatever i'm telling you you just write it down properly the next step is to distribute the service department overheads back to the production department right full stop done done this is referred to continue writing this is referred to as secondary distribution or redistribution secondary distribution or redistribution secondary distribution or redistribution which can be done which can be done under five methods which can be done under five methods which can be done under five methods come down line gap write down method one write down method one direct redistribution method guys quick quick if you want you can write it in a green ink also fine if you have written it in a black ink fine uh, write down method one direct redistribution method guys quick make it fast make it fast write down under that bullet point write down this method assumes that service departments will provide service only to production departments this method assumes that service departments will provide a service only to production department this method assumes that service department will provide service only to production department next point next point it will not provide services to other service departments it will not provide services to other service departments it will not provide services to other service departments full stop continue writing even in reality if such services are provided to other service departments even in reality if such services are provided to other service department this method ignores it this method ignores it even in reality if such services are provided to other service department this method ignores it this method ignores it clear guys done done yes now line gap write down method 2 method 2 write down step method stroke step ladder method stroke non reciprocal method step method stroke step ladder method stroke non reciprocal method non reciprocal method done done write down write down under that okay okay uh, the first method first method you wrote wrote right so somewhere you just write down in a blue ink or whatever ink you want no traffic you just write down somewhere visibly no traffic no traffic means what no give and take between whom between the service departments correct step method write down under that 
this method assumes that a service department can this method assumes that a service department can give service to another service department this method assumes that a service department can provide service to another service department but cannot take service but cannot take service I am repeating, this method assumes that a service department can provide service to another service department but cannot take service, but cannot take services from that service department, but cannot take services from the service department to which it has given services, to which it has given service, but cannot take service from the service department to which it has given service. Are you clear with this guys? Tongue twister mother. Yes, I am repeating. This method assumes that a service department can provide service to another service department, but cannot receive, but cannot receive services from the service department to which it has given the service. Are you clear with this? Yes. So, I can provide service to another service department, but I cannot receive services from the service department to which I have provided service, correct? From that department alone, I should not. That, that is, that is I dot E dot, write down, I dot E dot, continue writing. It follows one-way traffic. It follows one-way traffic. One-way traffic, write it in a red ink. It follows one-way traffic. It follows one-way traffic. The day before your exam, when you are reading three broad methods, what do they say? No traffic, one-way traffic, two-way traffic. Revision done. That's all. Clear guys, clear guys, then write down, line gap, write down, method 3, 4 and 5, method 3, 4 and 5, method 3, 4 and 5, so basically 3, 4, 5 and what, repeated distribution, simultaneous equation, trial and error, broadly you can just write down, reciprocal services method, write down, reciprocal services method reciprocal services method reciprocal services method hyphen write down the three repeated distribution simultaneous equation trial and error please write all the three names repeated distribution simultaneous equation and and what trial and error quick guys done quick 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 done Right now, write down in this method, in this method, service departments can give as well as take services. In this method, service departments can give as well as take services from the other service department, from the other service department from the other service department, right? These are the best methods. These are, these means what? Three methods I told you, right? So under, under uh, this one, reciprocal. These are the best methods under secondary distribution. These are the best methods under secondary distribution. Clear with this? Done. Written down. Yes, guys. You guys are following the color coding also. Only in black ink you are writing all these things. Yes. Right. And write down, write down. Within bracket, red ink, two-way traffic. Within bracket, red ink, two-way traffic. Two-way traffic. Clear with this, guys. Clear with this. So, in the next session, we will be doing all this numerical problem related to secondary distribution. So the next few sums are relating to secondary distribution and then we will move to the third phase called as absorption. Clear with this, this will be the agenda. So as of now, we first started with the introduction of this sub chapter, why we are studying this chapter. Then we went on to see the overview, three steps involved in this chapter, primary distribution, secondary distribution, absorption. In that primary distribution, we did one sum. Secondary distribution, we saw the multiple methods. We learned when to do what methods. So this is where we are. In the next in the next session, we will be doing what? We will be doing numerical problems in secondary distribution. And then we will learn the concept of absorption and actually do numerical problems there also. Are you clear with this?
please revise till whatever has been covered in this session. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you all so much and good day.